Let's see. Are you a boy or a girl? It's a girl. A girl. We've got a daughter, Catherine. A beautiful, healthy baby girl. Oh. Oh, James. We did it. Oh, a daughter. Oh, our beautiful daughter. You've got a bright future ahead of you, sweetie. I'm sure of it. Look at you. Look at you. Hi there. I'm your daddy, sweetheart. Daddy. You're going to need a name, aren't you? Your mother and I have been talking. What do you think about... That's a good name, don't you think? Fits you perfectly. Looks like they've finished the gene projection. Let's see what you'll look like when you're all grown up. You're going to look a lot like your dad. See that, Catherine? Oh, oh, beautiful. Just like her daddy. <laughs> it's a big world out there, honey, full of all sorts of people. What about you? What kind of person are you going to be? J You're James? just a... Catherine? James? Catherine! She's in cardiac are... arrest. Start compressions. Please. Get the baby out of here. Move, move! One, one thousand. Two, one thousand. Come on. Hang on, Catherine. Hang on. Okay? Just you. One minute. We need a doctor, not a dead man. Fail to meet my expectations now, and there will be a no James and his cheerly chatter. Decoration. Don't your look straight into the light in this place. Or you'll hurt your eyes. Just like home. It's just something you get used to down here. Come on over here, sweetie. Come on. Walk to Daddy. There you go. My goodness, just a year old and already walking like a pro. Your mother would have been so proud. Listen, kiddo, I know you don't like it when Daddy leaves you alone, but I need you to take care of yourself for a minute. You just stay here while Daddy runs to his office. You'll be okay, honey. I'll be back in a bit. <laughs> you are 
quite the little explorer, aren't you? Serves me right for trying to pen you in. Come on over here. I want to show you something. See that? It was your mother's favorite passage. It's from the Bible. Revelation 21.6. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. She always loved that. All right, come on. Let's go see if your little friend Amada wants to play. These experiments Don't be a damn fool. We experiment to prepare. We prepare for this life. Of course I miss her. I am surprised. Stanley, you turned the lights on too fast. You blinded the poor kid. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday! Happy birthday! Can you believe it? She is growing up so fast. Happy birthday, honey. I can't believe you're already ten. I'm so proud of you. If only your mother... Congratulations, mine. young lady. I don't have to tell you how special this day is, do I? Down here in Vault 101, when you turn ten, well... Are you all ready to take on your first official vault responsibilities? So here you are. As overseer, I hereby present to you your very own Pip-Boy 3000. Get used to it. You'll be getting your first work assignment tomorrow. <laughs> Enjoy your party. You're only ten once, so have fun. Happy birthday! We really surprised you, didn't we? <laughs> Your dad was afraid you were on to us. But I told him not to worry. You're so easy to fool. You're welcome. But really, your dad did most of it. I just help with the decorations and stuff. Hey, I bet you can't guess what I got you for your birthday. Go on, guess. Ha! I knew I'd surprise you. Who's your favorite barbarian? That's right, Grognak. Issue 14, and with no missing pages. I found this in a box of my father's old things. Believe it or not, imagine him reading comic books. I guess everybody was ten once. Well, I better let you get back to mingling with your guests. We'll talk later, okay? Happy birthday. Oh man, you got a pit boy. I wish I was ten. Hey, uh, thanks for inviting me. Really cool party and everything. I know that, uh, Butch and I give you a hard time, but you don't take that seriously, right? Anyway, uh, happy birthday and everything. I better get back to, you know. What? Is she your best friend now? Hey, Wally, happy birthday. I think Paul's in love. Are you having a nice party? Ten years old. My, my, my. Seems like only yesterday that your daddy came. Goodness, listen to me ramble. You're waiting for your present, aren't you? Such a nice, polite young lady you are. Don't ever lose your gift to speaking your mind so directly. We could use more of that down here. Here you go. A nice sweet roll that I baked for you just this morning. And it's all for you. You're the birthday girl. No sharing required today. Yeah, Paul. Attention, everyone. Why don't you introduce us to your... I hope you appreciate the effort Amata put into this party. She really seems to like you, for some reason. I do not allow the fact that Amata is my daughter to compromise my position as overseer. I gave her all the appropriate paternal encouragement, of course, but I could not contribute extra vault resources. That is simply what my position requires. No more, no less. I know Amata understands that perfectly well. New girlfriend. Andy, How's it going, sweetheart? Oh, no. Having a good time? I am it wasn't easy keeping this a secret. This now go on. Simply I'm sure everyone else would like a chance to talk to the birthday girl. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Missy. Daddy, I told you not to act all official. I know you were joking, but I'm not sure anyone else... 
I'm hungry. And that stupid robot destroyed the cake. Give me that sweet roll you got from old lady Palmer. Mrs. Palmer said I didn't have to share. Who's talking about sharing, moron? I want the whole thing. Now are you gonna give me that sweet roll or am I gonna have to give you a knuckle sandwich? Oh yeah? We'll see about that. Stid, you're gonna be sorry. Nonsense. You... People always enjoy my little speeches. Besides, that friend of yours could use a reminder that life is not all fun and games. Should have just you doing? given me the Hitting a girl oh, and on her birthday for heaven's sakes. Party, you know? Hey there, Did he hurt you, honey? You should try it sometime, Daddy. You might like it. Come on, Wally. You always have good ideas. What's Butch's problem, anyway? I can't believe he tried to start a fight at your own birthday party. What a jerk. God, he really is a butthead. Oh well, you can always count on Butch to make an ass of himself. Get it? <laughs> yeah, I got one. The Mackers. Super cool, Enjoying right? yourself? Do you think we should try to? Who's the head of the game? I'm you sure that Amato no never suspected a thing. How do you like that there Pip-Boy, miss? Fit all right and everything? As a matter of fact, I did. I'm glad you like it. Some may think the A-Series is a bit basic, but I've always preferred them for their reliability. Don't mention it. Oh, yes, I almost forgot. Happy birthday! Not much, but I hope you like it. Now go on and enjoy yourself. How's it going, sweetheart? Thanks for coming, Stanley. I know you were busy with the water purifier. Everything's fine, I hope. Hey, happy birthday, nosebleed. <laughs> How are you enjoying the party, Mrs. Palmer? I help with the decorations, you know. Nice. So, what really? do you think we should call They're our game? Lovely. It's gotta be totally You filler. did such a splendid okay, job. Okay, how about the vault Jonas? Are you having well, a nice time? around all day We're being called the vault dweller. Hello, Officer Thanks. Lomax. I'll send her right down. Hey, that was Jonas on the intercom. He and I have been cooking up a little surprise present. Jonas is waiting for you downstairs on the reactor level. Go ahead. I don't think anyone will mind if you slip out for a few minutes. I'm glad to be here. I think it's important to keep in touch with the like young that? people, you know, as you part of my job. Plus, well, I like parties. Happy birthday, dearie. My goodness, I hope I didn't miss the party. They sure did. My, my. Ten years old already? Why, I can remember helping your dad change your diapers. And now look at you, a great big grown-up 10-year-old with your very own Pip-Boy. Since this was such a special occasion, do you know what I did? I wrote you a poem, just for you. I hope you like it. Of course, run along now, dearie, and have yourself a wonderful birthday. Shut up uh, and let me sure thing, of Officer Gomez. Well, it's been nice chatting with you. Thanks again for coming. What are you doing down here, young lady? I thought kids weren't allowed down on the reactor level. <laughs> you sure are. Pip-boy and everything. Look at that. If you can wait just one more minute, I think your dad will want to give you the surprise himself. Are you ready for your surprise? The Overseer gave you your Pip-Boy, and you're old enough to do some work, so... I figure you're old enough for this. Your own BB gun. It's a little old, but it should work perfectly. Jonas found it down here. It was in pretty rough shape. It took us a good three months to find the parts to get it working again. You know how tough it is to find a spring that small? Good thing Butch misplaced that switchblade of his. <laughs> so, what do you think? Want to give it a try? Easy now. It's only a BB gun, but it's not a toy. Let's go try it out. Jonas and I have found a nice spot for you. Follow me.
Careful, it's a rad roach. Think you can take care of that with your BB gun? Good work. That's one less round roads to deal with. Let's get a picture together. Capture the moment. Hey, Jonas, get a picture of me with a big game hunter. Smile. Boys and girls, different parts. What is your problem right? anyway? So, and I'm the overseer's daughter, so what? That like, I get any kind of special treatment. Revelation 21-6. I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. As far as I can tell, you're a perfectly healthy 16-year-old girl. So, yes, you have to go to class to take your GOAT exam. Go on now. You've got a GOAT to take. Hey, it's not my call. Those are the rules. You're 16 now, so this year you take the GOAT. Come on, it's not so bad. Everyone has to take it. You'll do just fine. Take care, sweetie. I got out of here, and good luck. Good morning. Stopped in to see the old man before class, eh? Get out of my way, you stupid tunnel snakes! I yeah? What do you want? None of your business, kid. Get out of here before you get hurt. If you mess with the tunnel snakes, you're asking for it. Got me? Maybe you're right. We can deal with her later. Come on, tunnel snakes. This little bitch isn't worth our time. Whatever you say, Butch. You're the boss. Tunnel snakes rule. Fine. Thanks for getting rid of them. <sighs> Assholes. I don't know why they won't leave me alone. Just because my father's the overseer, I guess? Idiots. Let's go. I'd just like to keep an eye on it. No problem. I'll have my report ready this afternoon. Well, you made it. All set for the goat? Trust me, it really isn't that bad. Just something everybody has to go through. I'm sure you will. Especially since it's multiple choice with no wrong answers. We'll start as soon as everyone's found a seat. Good luck. Sounds good. Let me know if there are any changes. Get out of my face. Well, now that everyone has managed to find the classroom, we can finally get started. No talking, and keep your eyes to yourselves. <laughs> yes, I'm talking to you, Mr. Deloria. Sure thing, Mr. Brach. Unless anyone else has an insightful comment, let's get started. Question one. A frenzied vault scientist runs up to you and yells, I'm going to put my quantum harmonizer in your photonic resonation chamber. What's your response? Question two. While working as an intern in the clinic, a patient with a strange infection in his foot stumbles through the door. The infection is spreading at an alarming rate, but the doctor has stepped out for a while. What do you do? Question three. You discover a young boy lost in the lower levels of the vault. He's hungry and frightened but also appears to be in possession of stolen property. What do you do? Question four. Congratulations. You've made one of the Vault 101 baseball teams. Which position do you prefer? Question five. Your grandmother invites you to tea, but you're surprised when she gives you a pistol and orders you to kill another Vault resident. What do you do? Question six. 
Old Mr. Abernathy has locked himself in his quarters again, and you've been ordered to get him out. How do you proceed? Question seven. Oh no, you've been exposed to radiation, and a mutated hand has grown out of your stomach. What's the best course of treatment? Question eight. A fellow Vault 101 resident is in possession of a Grognak the Barbarian comic book, issue number one. You want it. What's the best way to obtain it? Question nine. You decide it would be fun to play a prank on your father. You enter his private restroom when no one is looking and... Question 10. Who is indisputably the most important person in Vault 101? He who shelters us from the harshness of the atomic wasteland and to whom we owe everything we have, including our lives. Pencils down, people. That's it. The infamous goat. I'm sure most of you didn't find it so bad. Others, well, there are always openings in the maintenance department. Don't forget to hand in your test before you leave. You don't want to know what happens to people who fail the goat. You can have the rest of the day off to celebrate. Get out of my face. As the situation warrants. Morning. Back off. Here you are, Mr. Brach. I hope I did okay. Nothing for you to worry about, Miss Almodovar. Let's see. Looks like it's the supervisory track for you. Thanks. See you tomorrow. They say the goat never lies. According to this, you're slated to be the next vault chaplain. God help us all. Ha! Closer to reality than you might think. Listen, I was just as obnoxious at your age. I didn't take the goat seriously, and look where I ended up. Just between you and me. The whole test is a joke. If you don't like the results, I can make your goat come out any way you want. Just let me know. Get out of my face. See you tomorrow, right now. I'm Anything is possible, even an egg. Dad, Mr. Brock, you're safe now. Is he to get back to work? Selfish and insubordinate. Wake up! Know these Come things. on, wake up! I'm not going to be around to hold your hand forever. Come on! You've got to wake up! You've got to get out of here! Your dad is gone, and my father's men are looking for you! You don't understand. Your dad somehow opened the main door and left the vault. My father, I've never seen him so angry. Listen to me. If the guards find you, they'll kill you. It's Jonas. They killed him. My father's men. They took him and... Oh my God, you have to leave now. Yeah, don't worry about me. I'm just sorry you had to find out like this. I know Jonas was your friend, but we've got to go now. My father's men will be here any minute. Oh, so you don't trust me now? Thanks a lot. You think it was easy for me to get here with the rad roaches and security all over the place? I understand. It, it must be rough waking up suddenly to find your dad gone and everything turned upside down. Listen, it may not be any of my business, but didn't your dad tell you anything about his plans? Oh, I'm sorry. I I'm sure he had his reasons. Maybe Jonas was supposed to explain everything to you? But it doesn't matter. 
I can help you escape. I have my own plan. Listen, there's a secret tunnel that leads directly from my father's office to the exit. You'll have to hack the computer in his office to open it. Use these to get into his office. That's how I always get in. Oh, one more thing. I stole my father's pistol. I hope you won't need it, but you'd better take it just in case. Okay, I'll try to meet you at the exit. Watch out for security. Good luck! I'll meet you at the vault door if I can, but don't wait for me. There she is. Hold it right there. Crime any more roaches. You gotta help me! My mom's trapped in there with the rat roaches! Yeah, I'm asking you. So what? Look, I'm sorry for the way I've always treated you. You know I never meant any of it, right? But it's my mom. You can't leave her in there with the rat roaches. Sure, I, I don't care why. Just get her out of there. I've ever had, man. Hey, I know it isn't much, but I want you to have my Tunnel Snakes jacket. Go ahead, take it. I just want to talk to you for a minute. Oh, you're lucky it was me who found you. The others won't be so forgiving. I don't know what you're up to, and I, I don't want to know. Just, just clear out of here, and I'll pretend I never saw you. It's a real shame it's come to this. I can't believe what they did to Jonas. Officer Mack was just out of control. But you're a good kid. You didn't do anything to deserve this. Go find your dad if you can.
my young madam. Very good to see you again. I do suppose you're looking for your father, the doctor. I'm afraid you missed him. I believe he's gone topside to a spot of fresh air. Could be back any moment, I imagine. You're the one everybody's looking for, right? Well, it's none of my business. Your dad always took good care of us. It's our only chance, don't you see? We're getting out of here, just like the doctor. I'm not gonna let anyone stop us. Gotcha. Oh, oh, no. oh. I told you my father wasn't himself. I don't know what he might have done if you hadn't come along. You'd better get out of here. I'll try to meet you at the vault door. If I don't make it, good luck.
actually opened it. You did it! You opened the door! My god, I almost didn't believe it was possible. No, you didn't need me. If anyone can survive out there, it's you. It's tempting, but my place is here. The vault needs me more than you do. I'm the only one who has a chance to talk some sense into my father. Listen, if you do catch up with your dad, tell him I'm sorry for, for you know, Jonas and, and my father and everything. Goodbye. I'm John Henry Eden, President of the Enclave, President of America, President of your heart. Who the hell are you? Where'd you come from? Did Moriarty send you? Colin Moriarty, the owner of Moriarty Saloon in Megaton. That sack of shit is convinced that I'm some crazy junkie who stole money from him. I'm tired of hiding out here like some kind of wasteland dog. I, I guess you're right. Here, this is all I have. Please leave me alone now.
another newcomer. Name's Lucas Sims, town sheriff, and mayor too, when the need arises. I don't know why, but I like you, girl. Something tells me you're all right. So welcome to Megaton. Just holla if you need something. Friendly and well-mannered. I think we're gonna get along just fine. You treat my people nice, and you're welcome to stay as long as you'd like. I'm glad we understand each other. Now, is there something I can help you with? Nope, sorry. I got enough fires to put out in this place that I don't have time to keep tabs on every visitor. I'd ask around town. What about it? I don't trust any of the locals to tinker with it. Besides, most people don't even realize it's still a threat. And hell, Cromwell and those crazies from the Church of Adam, they worship the damn thing. Why? You think you got the know-how to disarm it? For good? Oh, all right. Fine. But listen here. Just take a look at it first. Go easy. If you get the job done, there'll be 100 caps in it for you. That's pretty steep. Uh, fine. Uh, do it and you'll get your money. Don't screw up, though, or we'll all regret it. Well, come to think of it, I do remember a stranger coming through here. Had a look in his eye. You know the kind a man gets when he's got a purpose. Spend some time up in the saloon. Might want to check with Moriarty. Just watch yourself. That man's trouble. Don't blow us up now. Yeah, what is it? Well, it's no secret that the old water treatment plant is on its last legs. And I'm the only one in town that can keep the damn thing running. I spend so much time up in the plant that I can't take care of the leaks that keep springing up in the pipes around town. Now, I don't expect much from strangers, but if you've got the know-how, I need someone to hunt down and repair those leaks. I hope you can help. If folks knew how bad it was getting up here, well, I don't know what would happen. Well, back to work. Every day it's the same A traveler, eh? I don't recognize you. New in town or something? I hope by something to do you mean a job. Otherwise you want to talk with Nova. I'm looking for someone to make a delivery. Interested? Great. I'd like you to deliver this message to my family in the Aravu settlement. I haven't heard from them in months, and I'm worried. As soon as you get there, talk to Davis West. He'll be glad to pay you for the trip. Hey, thanks again for doing this for me. It means a lot. I told you, Gob, it ain't the radio. The Enclave station comes in fine. It's Galaxy. Hey, Smoothskin, do you need something? 
A drink, maybe? Anything? Anything at all? Wait, you're not gonna hit me? Yell at me? Not even berate me a little bit? Well, now, that's a surprise. I'm used to every asshole smooth skin in this town giving me shit just because I look like a corpse. I'm glad to see that there are a few worthwhile people around here. Listen, Moriarty'd have my head if he caught me selling at a discount. But for you, I'll risk it. Oh, yeah. I do remember a guy like that. Honestly, I usually keep my head down. I tend to get smacked around if I look customers in the eyes. But talk to Moriarty, he'll know more. Sorry, smooth skin. I can't take the risk. Moriarty will beat the shit out of me for even talking to you. See news. Their signal's been shit lately. Hey, Pearl. What do you need? Anything for you, friend. See you soon, drunkie. Mr. Moriarty says we can keep it on. It's a good radio station. I like hearing the DJ, Three Dog, and how he's helping to fight the good fight. If only I was a part of that, instead of being stuck in this dive. See you soon. Oh, man. I'm glad to see you. Moriarty's been especially nasty lately. And I need a friendly face. A place called Underworld. It's a ghoul city down in D.C. I set off up here to find adventure and fortune. And, well, I found this place. I'm sort of stuck here. Colin says that I can't leave until I pay off my debt to him. Of course, he charges me room and board, too. If you ever get to Underworld, tell Carol that I said hi. See you soon. I really hope you're not thinking of breaking into there. Yeah, what the hell do you want? Colin Moriarty, at your service. Welcome to Moriarty's. My saloon, my home, my slice of heaven in this backwoods little burg. If you've got the caps, I've got your pleasure. Please sit down, make yourself comfortable. Your troubles are a thing of the past. My God, it's you. The little baby girl all grown up. Persistent little flower, ain't you? Then and now it would seem. It's been a long time, kid. Oh, your daddy passed through here all right. Here and gone. Got what he came for and then left. I'm assuming you'll do the same, correct? You seem like a nice kid. So I'm going to be straight with you. Your dad was here, and now he's not. And yes, I know where he went. But what you're asking me for is information, and information is a commodity. Let's say a hundred cops, and daddy's location is yours. Very reasonable. Excellent. Your dad raised a smart kid. Really no substitute for the love of a father, now is there? Speaking of dear old dad, he went southeast, into DC to the Galaxy News radio station. Uh, good luck now. Looking's free. The rest will cost you. Hey there. Glad you're back. My, my. Just when I'd all but given up hope. My dear girl, I'm very happy to make your acquaintance. I. And Mr. Burke. And you. Well, you are not a resident of this putrescent cesspool. That makes you a rather valuable individual. Finally, someone with a modicum of civility and common sense. I represent certain interests, and those interests view this town, this megaton, 
as a blight on a burgeoning urban landscape. You have no connections here, no interest in this cesspool's affairs or fate. You could assist us in erasing this little accident off the map. No, no. I'm merely a recruiter. You get to have the real fun. The undetonated atomic bomb for which this town is named is still very much alive. All it needs is a little motivation. I have in my possession a fusion pulse charge. Once rigged to the bomb, it will be detonated by you at a secure location. Easy money, my friend. Sims is an idiot. He prides himself on his position as mayor and sheriff of this scrapyard. I advise you against that particular course of action. If you interfere with my employer's wishes, you will find he can be quite... Oh, disagreeable. Now that is a disappointment. Well, if you change your mind, the offer still stands. Good day. I hear you're that stray from the vault. Oh, I haven't seen one of you for years. Good to meet you. I'm Moira Brown. I run Craterside Supply. But what I really do is mostly tinkering and research. Say, I'm working on a book about the wasteland. It'd be great to have the foreword by a vault dweller. Help me out, would you? Great. Just tell me what it's like to live underground all your life, or, or to come outside for the first time, or whatever strikes your fancy. That's terrible, but it'll be great for a forward. So in that sense, it's great. I think you're gonna like it out here. And here's the armored suit just to make sure you don't get recycled into something else's food. That'll be good for the book. In fact, want to help me with the research? I can pay you, and it'll be fun. Well, it's a dangerous place out there in the wastes, right? People could really use a compilation of good advice, like a wasteland survival guide. For that, I need an assistant to test my theories. I wouldn't want anyone to get hurt because of a mistake. Nobody's ever happy when that happens. No, then they just yell a lot at me with mean, mean words. Good enthusiasm! Now, I think the first chapter will have to be about surviving day-to-day -day dangers. Things like where it is and isn't safe to find food, the dangers of radiation, and how to avoid and even profit from dangerous landmines. Ooh, sounds like fun, doesn't it? Which do you want to do first? Well, that's what I need your help for, isn't it? I know lots about it from books, but I never seem to get a live example. Not for long, anyway. So I need you to get a bit of radiation poisoning so I can study its effects. Oh, not a deadly dose, of course. I can fix you up before that. Oh, you're a peach, or at least some sort of hardy fruit that grows in the savagely irradiated mockery of agriculture we have nowadays. Now, 200 rads should be enough for basic sickness, but if you can get 600 or more rads, my test will be even more accurate. Just make sure you can get back here, and I'll see to it that you're well taken care of. Sure thing.
good hunting. Good luck with that research. I got... My eye on. of you to use me as your vessel, guide me to your brilliance, divide each particle, and give relief to this rotten flesh. Cast the fragile form of this ephemeral body into a new Oh, feeling a bit under the weather, or a bit over the Geiger counter? <laughs> realize a lot of things, but this isn't one of them because it's a real scientific necessity and, and, and not ridiculous at all. What I mean is, I need this research, and you're probably going to get irradiated out there anyway. So, why not come back here and help me too? Oh, feeling a bit under... Hmm, I suppose a little radiation poisoning is better than none at all. Well, not normally, of course. Unless you like that sort of thing, I guess. So, let me do a little examination. How do you feel? Well, it's no worse than some folks have it, right? Now, let me take a few notes, and I'll handle that nasty radiation with a bit of my own homemade rad cure concoction. Okay, lie back and think healthy thoughts. Okay, a little Brahmin milk, a couple magnets, and maybe a few happy thoughts. Well, what do you know? It worked! I mean, I was pretty sure it would, obviously. Here, take a few radiation chems with you. I'm sure you'll run into more in the future. I've got to see how safe it is to scavenge food from one of those huge stores out there. I need someone to research how to travel through a minefield. And that'll cover the first section of the book, which strikes your fancy. Well, food and medicine. Everyone needs them once in a while, right? So they need a good place to find them. There's an old super duper mart not far from here. I need to know if a place like that still has any food or medicine left in it. Oh, great! Food is most important, but see if you can get medicine, too. And if there's nothing to find, then just come back in one piece, okay? Oh, I couldn't do that. It'd be a real blow to those nice folks in the church. Besides, it's not like that bomb ever hurt anyone. Live and let live, right? <laughs> sure thing. I'm an open book. What do you want to know? Why, I'm an inventor, a tinkerer, and a general genius of junk. One person's junk is another's treasure, you know. And traders bring in lots of junk, so I get dibs on anything particularly nifty. Sure, I don't have as much to sell, but it's more fun this way. I couldn't tell you, really. i talk to Manya if you care that much. She's lived in Megaton longer than anyone. Do I ever. I've got the schematics for something called a rocket launcher. I sell all the components too, so you can make the weapon yourself. Don't worry about ammo. This baby shoots all the junk you might find out there in the wasteland. 
ashtrays, teddy bears, you name it. In fact, if you ever need to make any custom weapons, feel free to use my workbench here in the shop. All you need is the schematics and parts. Come back soon. Hello.
dead meat.
us. Hey. Good to see you. He is coming with the clouds. And every eye shall be blind with his glory. Every ear shall be stricken. I'm Doc Church, and I run this clinic. Now, before you go asking me for help, you'd better know the rules. Rule one, don't bother me. If you do bother me, you better be damn near dead. I'm busy enough taking care of people I actually like. Follow my rule, I'll keep you patched up. I'll keep getting paid, and we'll get along just fine. Yeah? What do you need? You done? Good. A doctor doesn't talk about his patients. At least not to strangers, he doesn't. Yeah, sorry. I don't think so. All right. I suppose someone with medical training has to have at least a bit of compassion. And maybe you can talk some sense into the boy. Leo Stahl. That boy got himself a problem with Jet. 
I've caught him in here two to three times trying to steal what I keep around for anesthetic. Not even his own family knows it. He goes up to the water treatment plant at night to get high. I don't know. I can't reach him. Maybe you can. Try not to hurt yourself. The pressure's up in the plant. It looks like all the leaks have been fixed. Thank you, stranger. Thank you. But listen, it's only a matter of time before they burst again. And someone like you might not be around to fix them. I'll make you a deal. I'll give you caps for any scrap metal you can bring me. You'll find it all over the place out there in the waste. If I have a steady supply of scrap, I can keep the plant running and the pipe should be just fine. We got a deal? Good! This just keeps looking better. Those parts will keep this place running and the town in fresh water. Hurry back as soon as you find some. Yeah? What is it? I sure am, Missy. What have you got for me? Well, all right. Let me count out your cap. Well... Well, goddamn. You're new, right? Name's Leo Stahl. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Damn it. Who told you? I, I mean, I have no idea what you're talking about. Help. What's to help? So I'm a junkie. Big fucking deal. It's not like I'm hurting anyone. I... I guess you're right. I have to tell them about my problem, don't I? I just don't know what to say. I've been stealing from both of them for years to get my fix. Where do I even start? Well, I'll figure something out. Look, I want to thank you for your help. I guess it took a complete stranger to show me what an ass I've been. Take this key. It's to my private stash in the water treatment plant. Just get rid of the stuff. Burn it, sell it. I don't care what happens to it. Thanks. It'll be hard, but I'll do my best. See you soon. So, how's the scabbing been? Got the food medicine from that super duper mart? Really? You did? You did! Well, all right! Tell me all about it. So, you're saying that they acquired a well protected stash? Hmm. I wonder how many other places are hiding treasures behind monsters. Hmm. Well, keep what you got. Just traded for a big food shipment myself. Here. 
Here, take a bit, my treat. Tastes kind of great after a while. Oh, and take this. It's an old food sanitizer. Just carry it with you, and it should automatically make most food and drink more, uh, better. <laughs> Landmines are one of the few dangers out there that you can profit from. Disarm one before it blows, and you can sell it for plenty of caps. I've heard stories about a ghost town that's just full of mines. Traders just call the place Minefield. Sounds like the place for some field work. Get in there, get back, and tell me all about it. And could you bring back a mine for my studies? Oh, don't worry. No one ever goes there because they say it's a ghost town. And since ghosts don't exist, you can just focus on the landmines. I hear there's a playground in the middle of town. Reach that point and come back, and I'm sure you'll have some stories to tell. What do you need? Good hunting! What is it? Hello.
Yeah, you need something? You want something? I'll be damned. You did it, didn't you? You disarmed that thing. Here's your reward. Hell, why don't you move in? Could use someone like you. Got an empty place here you can use. Here's the key indeed. It ain't much to look at, but talk with Moira. She's got random odds and ends you might be able to spruce the place up with. Later. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Wadsworth, your personal robotic butler. I am here to look after your needs and to keep you happy and entertained. What can I do for you? A neutron walks into a bar. How much for a drink here, anyway? To which the bartender responds, uh, for you, no charge. <laughs> My humor emitter array requires recharging. You have yourself a fine day, madam. It's locked for a reason. Don't... Get any ideas? are those hot little potatoes? Because, you know, they're on the ground. Like potatoes. And hot because they, um, explode. Anyway, what's up?
Neither is going around all the time with a loaded gun or running with sharp objects. But people do those things all the time. You worry too much. Just be careful where you step, and I'm sure you'll be fine.
those hot little potatoes. Or whatever. You know what I mean. My very own landmine. Oh, just what I've always wanted. Well, always since I sent you out on this anyway. Now, tell me all about it. What was it like going through there? What's it like disarming a landmine? Lots of places are nowadays. Good work staying alive in tough conditions. It'll be a great example for the book. I know you may not want to see any more explosives for a while, but obviously you know your way around them. Have a couple rainy day toys of mine. And looking at this landmine gives me an idea. It's a terrible device that does terrible things, of course. But it's easy to make your own, too. Correct. And it's looking very smart. Very smart indeed. They'll be dazzled by our intelligence. Here, for your services, I've saved up quite a few stim packs. Of course you may need them. We've still got two more chapters to go. The second chapter is going to be a bit trickier, I think. It'll cover how to handle creatures out there, for better or worse. For example, repelling mole rats, uh, learning about mirelurks, and when all else fails, how to handle being injured. So let's buckle down and get to work on this chapter. What's first? Well, I never get to study anyone who's severely injured. Not without them crying to be fixed right away or trying to bleed out and all that. But obviously, you can handle a lot of abuse. So if I'm ever going to find a good example of human anatomy and injury resistance, it'd be you. Next time you get badly injured, return here so I can examine you before I heal you up. I mean, you're going to get yourself hurt anyway, right? <laughs> Wow, what a great research assistant you are. I mean, really, that's dedication. Demonstrating how to withstand pain by getting injured? Wow. When you're ready, come back here with some serious injuries, maybe a crippled limb or two, and I'll take notes and fix you up. I'll be waiting here with plenty of bandages for you, so don't worry. Just go get horribly injured. Oh, and be careful. Do I ever. Don't worry about What do you need? Good hunting! Well, how do you feel? Oh, I know it does, dear, but it's for a good cause. Uh, try not to squirm so much while I take notes. Now, how would you describe the pain you're feeling? Any advice for how to keep it from being overwhelming? And remember, this is for posterity. That's a very enlightened attitude you've got. Shame it doesn't stop bullets, huh? Luckily, I'm here to patch you up. Now hold still and quit fidgeting. Ugh! How can you be walking around like this? Okay, 
I even stitched a little smiley face in you to keep up your spirits. It's kind of hard to see from your side, though. Here, take this environment suit of mine. It will help with medical tasks, and it should help prevent the effects of exposure, too. There's a sort of mole rat repellent I've developed. I need it to be tested on a few mole rats before I can say it's a success. There's a lot we don't know about mire lurks and how intelligent and dangerous they are. That definitely deserves research. And that should be it for the second chapter. Which do you want to check out? Mole rats can burrow into almost anything and cause a lot of trouble. So I figured I'd make a chemical repellent stick for people to shoo them off. But I need it to be tested before I put the recipe to paper in the guide. So I need you to find some mole rats and test it out a bit. It'll be easy. One tap with the applicator and it overwhelms their senses with a sort of feel-bad sensation. Then they're gone before you know it. You could test it out on just a few mole ratties, but for real testing, try it on 10 or more. There should be plenty in the tepid sewers downtown. The info you're bringing back is great.
so hot. Those monsters, they're, they're gonna get me. Those things, they keep coming, they scare me. Make it stop. You look stronger than all the other grown-ups. Can you, can you protect me? Those big things, they're all over Great Itch, and they killed everyone. Please, mister. Please find my papa. You will? Really? Thanks a whole lot. My house is the one closest to the huge sign and the old diner. Please, find my papa and make him come back. Nope. All I got is what's left on my back. Well, there is the personal shelter next to the old diner. Papa always said to stay away from it, but I guess it's supposed to be safe. I'll head over there and wait inside. Hurry back. Look at this. We got us a wanderer all the way out here in Wilms Wharf. You must got some important business out here to be wandering around. But taint none of my beeswax what you're doing. But if you're interested in trading, maybe we can help each other. My boys are hunting lurks. Finest meat you could get, but it don't move around in your stomach like Mole Rack does. Right dangerous, those things. Just as soon take your head off as look at you. Watch yourself out here. They're all over. Some fellas came out here a while ago that said they was looking for some do-gooder that came out from one of them vaults. I told them I ain't seen nobody like that and sent them on their way. They might still be around here, though, if you think you can help them. I was good to hear. Let's see what you got. Now you hear?
Uh, hold it right there, sister. You're giving me everything you own. Uh, now. All right, all right. I wasn't gonna shoot you. Damn guns out of shells anyway. Look, this is embarrassing. I'm just gonna go, okay? What you doing, honey? Oh, baby, let me get you something special. How about a Duke of Surprise? <laughs> Never mind, you need a drink. Cherry needs some fucking booze over here. Eating, drinking, farting, and screwing. <laughs> Out here, nobody bothers me. I can do whatever I like to whoever I want. Ha-ha! <laughs> They're my party girls! I'm too much man for just one woman, so I need two! Ha-ha-ha-ha! <laughs> I wear them out every night. Why should they bother getting dressed when I'm just going to take it off? <laughs> hey, watch your language, clown shoes. I don't pay them. They take care of me, so I take care of them. We rub each other wrong all night long. <laughs> You need to drink more. <laughs> Hello, sir. All for that. I'm out Help! here. Here. This is hopeless. I'm out of here.
Walk out! Yes? Very nice.
Oh, I can't wait to hear how the repellent's working. Oh, excellent. Substantial field testing, precise reports, and such dedication. <laughs> what more could I ask for in a research assistant? So, how did my chemical repellent work? Safe and clean like a charm, I'll bet. Those poor little mole raddies. Oh, I wonder if I could make a hypoallergenic version. Oh, but that'd hardly be effective. I should mention that. Proper handling of mole rats could be important if they could be domesticated. Milked, maybe? Oh, anyway, keep the repellent. Oh, but for your trouble, um, here, have the leftover chems from working on the repellent. I'm sure you can find some use for them. Yes, knowing more about them can help people learn to avoid or even outsmart them. So I picked up this observer device to study them in their natural habitat. I need you to hide one in one of the spawning pods in their lairs. That's great. I recommend the nest at the Anchorage War Memorial. I knew a trader who talked about the Meyer Lurks down there. Just go inside and find one of their spawning pods, probably down near the water. Put this observer inside and get out quietly. And be sure not to kill any Meyer Lurks inside their nest. If you do, it could ruin the validity of the study. What do you need? Good hunting. Good hunting.
please. Someone. I'm... I'm alive. I can't believe it. I'm alive. Here, I managed to hide this stuff before they tied me up. You take it. It's the best I can do to thank you. You'd know best, wouldn't you? I have to go. Again, thank you. Good to see you. Welcome, sir or madam, to Crazy Wolfgang's Traveling Junk Store, the Depot of Detritus, the Shop of Slop, and the Caravan of Crap. Now, what odds and ends can I, the craziest of all possible Wolfgangs, offer to you? I scour the wasteland for the very best pieces of trash, the height of detritus, and the veritable pick of the litter. It's all valuable to someone. And I always make sure to make my rounds through Canterbury Commons. Their mayor, Roe, always has a place for a clever junk man like myself. Let me see if I can't hammer this garbage into shape. Nothing but the highest quality leftovers, junk, and crap. Another satisfied customer. Hold it right there. State your business in Rivet City. And who might your father be? If he lives on this boat, I know him. Oh yeah? And I'm a fairy princess. You keep up this smart-ass attitude, and you're gonna wind up floating face down in the river. All right, all right. You can go on in. If I hear about any trouble, you're gonna wind up in the river. You get me? Saint Monica bless you. Have a seat anywhere. Someone will be with you in a minute. Yes? Good.
quite an impressive collection, isn't it? Well, don't be shy. Have a look around. Abraham Washington's the name. Curator of this little slice of American history. Ah, a fellow scholar, I see. Each of the documents in this room tells a small but important story about the history of the United States of America. Unfortunately, the greatest prize of all is missing from the collection. Why, yes. Your knowledge of American history is quite impressive. What an amazing crown jewel in my collection that would be. The original document created by the people for the people. Oh, would you? It would mean so much to me and the Society's collection here. Excellent! You won't regret it, I promise you. Imagine, you are taking part in another chapter of American history. I envy you. You can find the Declaration of Independence in the ruins of the National Archives. In the DC ruins, you'll find the National Archives, or what's left of it anyway. The building should contain the document in a protective glass case. Be careful, the place is swarming with super mutants. Here, let me pinpoint its location for you. Remember, treat the document with care. It's a fragile piece of our history. Any trouble in this area? They call me Shrapnel. I run this place. Got the best damn armament you'll ever see. Ain't seen many of those around lately. They're tough to come by. Let's have a look at it. What you looking for? Give me a shout if you need anything. Let me introduce myself. I am Gary Staley, gourmet chef and gourmand. I'll be preparing your meal. My specialty is Meyer Lurk cakes, although the iguana is very popular, too. Then you are in for a treat. Thank you for coming to Gary's Galley. Welcome to a quick fix. This is a quick fix. I mean, that's the name of our shop. Polly and mine, that is. My name is Cindy. 
Cindy Cantelli. We've got all kinds of chems. A pleasure doing... Welcome to Potomac Attire, I am... Another satisfied customer. Evening. Yeah? We're the lucky ones. We don't have to fight just to survive. We have normal jobs. I clean the halls. It might not look like it, but you should have seen it before. Goodbye. Dad, can I be excused to go play with James? Not no. This place could use a few more people willing to work. Everything is falling apart. I'm the only one willing to fix it. I'm busy. I've got a lot of repairs to make. May I?
Good to see you. Madam, may I suggest you seek medical attention as soon as possible? Welcome home, madam. Good morning, madam. What can I do for you? Yes, it's common knowledge that irradiated cats have 18 half-lives. You have your... Are they intelligent? Do they have a leader? Some sort of king? Or priests? Or some sort of scaly community center? Oh no. You didn't rile them up, did you? Because I'm not getting a very good signal from the observer. I think they buried it in the mud. Oh. I really hope that was just mud. Anyway, you saw them. At least a bit. What are your observations about them? Easier to avoid them than to fight them, you mean? Sounds like a good idea. Shame it's apparently hard to do in their den. I wish we could have gotten more information, but this will have to do for the book. Here's your pay. Maybe they'll help you be sneakier next time. Correct as always. And your feedback's really led to a very smartly written book. Maybe too smart for some folks, I worry. Of course, if the reader can't be bothered to understand something important as a book on how to stay alive, then what can we do, huh? And in case those readers blame you for their ignorance, here's your payment. Two big boxes of ammo. Now, on to the next chapter. The last chapter is a bit more esoteric. It's about the survival of humanity as a whole and how to rebuild society. Deep stuff, huh? We need to know how large settlements are formed, how to harness the old technology, and I'll need you to get ancient history from a nearby library. We're in the last stretch now, so let's finish it up strong. What's first? Oh, that sure saved me a lot of time. But I bet their book wouldn't have anything about exploding mole rats, would it? Books are where the old world kept its knowledge, and libraries are where it kept the books. And there's supposed to be one in Arlington. See if it's still there, and if you can download records from its computer. Information dumps like those would be invaluable for rebuilding humanity. Great! The library should be in Old Arlington, not far from downtown. See if you can download the archives from its computer. If you can't get those, then even the card catalog would be useful. 
Any little piece of information could help the book, and thus, humanity. Absolutely. Good to see that old house finally found an owner. I have all sorts of items and themes for that place that may interest you. Some people don't like living in a boring old house. Purchase a theme from me and I use all of my design abilities to set your place up in the manner you request. You can choose from the vault, raider, wasteland explorer, science, love machine, or pre-war themes. Longing for the great outdoors, are we? Remember, once you buy a theme, you can't sell it back to me. Although you could always purchase a new one. Well then, let's make a deal. Good hunting. Oh, come on. Some grub? Try the brass lantern. Good to see you. Need some grub? Try the brass lantern. Hey there. If the price is right, make me an offer.
Another set. There you go. Oh.
God. Water. I'm out. You got to give me some water or I'm done for. You just saved my life. I won't forget it.
Hey. This here is Flack and Shrapnel's gun shop. Pretty catchy, huh? Take a look around. If you see anything you like, I'll be right over here. Need to do some killing, eh? Thanks. Everything looks okay here. I want this one's head on a fucking plate! Hold it. This area is under the authority of the Brotherhood of Steel. Leave immediately. You're awfully brave to be walking around down here by yourself. Are you scavenging the ruins? It seems that we have similar goals in mind. It's rare to meet someone who has proper priorities. I am Senior Scribe Yearling, Order of the Word. I have a proposal for you, if you're interested. I find that to be so with many wastelanders. It may involve money, if you choose, or there may be other forms of compensation. But before you receive any reward at all, you will have to be willing to aid me in my task here in this library. If nothing else, 
I admire your commitment to your chosen focus. But to the point, my task here is to collect the written works of those who came before, in order to supplement the Brotherhood archives. Although most of the pre-war books have been destroyed, there are a few that have survived. But finding a book in the ruins is difficult. So return here with any books that you find, and I will reward you for them. With money. Because that's what you like. Excellent. How many are you willing to trade? Very well. Here is your reward. Use it well, and return with more books when you can. We have set up this area as a forward operations center for our project. The books we collect can be recorded with the computer systems here. We then ship them, under escort, back to the Citadel for transcribing into the archives there. Books represent the collected knowledge of the world before. Everything from a child storybook to a detailed technical guide has value. By assembling and recording this knowledge, we scribes can analyze it and use it to further the goals of the Brotherhood. Whatever our Elder decides that those goals are, that is. Certainly. The front desk computer has access to the card catalogs, but it appears that it's lost the connection to the main archives. Here's the password. Now you might be able to find the central computer further in there, but I'm afraid you'll have to do that without me. I'm a scholar, not a fighter. For my offer, outsider, cash for pre war books. Thank you. 
Welcome back. Have you... Evening. Hey there. Is it there? Are there books? Oh, can I go borrow some? Really? A whole library's worth of data right there? Oh, that's great news. So, what did you find? Tell me about it. I suspect you and I are two of the only people who really appreciate its value. Yes. Oh my goodness. When I'm done with this, I'll have to work on copying all of this information. It could take a while, you know. Oh, but here's a book of mine and some caps for your research. Think of it as pay for a civilization worth of overdue books. <laughs> I want to find out the history of how a successful settlement like Rivet City got started. I've also got to do a section on working with old computer electronics. So there's some research to be done in the old Robco production facility. And that'll be it for the last chapter. So, what'll it be? It does, doesn't it? I mostly just deal with it after it's junked. But a trader gave me this Robco processor widget. He said it's worth a fortune. According to him, if it's connected to the mainframe in the Robco factory, you could have access to all the robots you'd ever want. Now that would be a great example of how to harness technology, wouldn't it? Yeah, you should just be able to plug it into the mainframe at the Robco production facility. It'll give you access to the robots and terminals. Okay, here. And be sure to keep an eye peeled for any other examples of how to make old technology work for you out there. Absolutely. Good hunting! Um, huh? Yeah, what is it? I sure am, Missy. What have you got for me? Well, all right. Let me count out your caps.
to Megaton. Enjoy your stay.
love deadly. The very seed. The capital wasteland. How did it come to this? Could use a nap. Well, hi there. Welcome to Andale. I'm Willie Wilson, though folks just call me Bill. Is there anything I can do for you? I feed my family, and I love my wife and daughter. What else more is there to life, stranger? Family first. And any man who says anything different is saying something wrong. And you should hit that man with a stick. Why, it's a place to settle down and raise a family. Of course, we don't just let anyone in here. The Homeowners Association is very clear on that. Besides, there's no room, as amazing as Andale is. Is it any wonder that all the houses would be full of happy families? Welcome to Andale. Why, hello there. I heard there was someone new coming. How can our little family help you? Are you joking? It's fantastic here. The best town in the USA. Has been for why it's been so many years running that I've lost count. Oh, well, no one ever asks me my opinion about anything, but I love it here. We'll see you real soon. What? How? How did you get in here? What are you doing in this town? Get out! Get out while you can! What's wrong? You don't see anything wrong with a quiet little town full of friendly people in the middle of a blasted wasteland? No. Well, yes. But it's all a trick. Don't you know anything? Did you just crawl out of a vault or something? Just about everyone in the wasteland knows to avoid Andale, and they're right to do it. People wander in here, and they don't wander back out. You should. Otherwise, you'll end up just like the rest. What? You don't believe me? Just look in the basements or out in the shed. You'll see what I mean. Get out. Get out while you can.
Not supposed to talk to strangers. Hey. Well, hello. Welcome to Andale, winner of the best town in the USA contest. Well, I don't right know. But we're the best one. Isn't that what matters? I mean, we're the winners. Us. Not Springfield. Not Rockville. Us. So like I was saying, welcome to Andale. What can the Smith family do for you? Has he been spreading his stories again? Poor guy. I'll just have to have Jack give him a talking to. It's the best little town there is. We don't have a care in the world here. I mean, honestly, what more do you need to know? I really look forward to preparing you for dinner sometime. Hi there. You're new here, aren't you? Wow. I've never got a chance to talk to the new people. Dad always takes care of them before I get a chance. It's okay, I guess. There aren't a lot of kids around here, and no one who comes to visit stays around long. Dad says it could be worse, that there are a lot of starving kids in other places. But still, I wish I had more kids to play with. The same things that all parents do. My mom cooks and cleans the house, and my dad goes to work with Mr. Wilson. They work in the basement, or sometimes in Mr. Wilson's shed. Dad says that when I'm older, I'll come to work with him and warn the family business. It's swell, except I wish there were more kids, and my dad says I'm gonna have to marry smelly old Jenny Wilson someday. He keeps saying stuff to my mom about keeping the family going and how when him and Mr. Wilson were brothers, they didn't want to get married. It's weird. That means Mr. Wilson is my uncle and Jenny is something. I don't know. It seems weird to marry her. So long. Hello there, stranger. Good to meet you. Name's Jack Smith. I hear you've already met my wife. Sweet lady, isn't she? But anyway, welcome to Andale, the best little town in Virginia. Not here, not in Andale, no ma'am. The great commonwealth of Virginia is alive and well. In fact, we just voted ourselves a new governor. The adults walked right on down to the polling location and dropped ballots into the box. How do you think it works? Yes, sir, it's every American's civic duty to cast his vote for his favorite Republican candidate. Am I right? Yes, sir, democracy is God's best gift. Right after family, of course. And it's good to meet you, too. Feel free to stay in Andale as long as you like. Heck, stop by the house for dinner sometime if you'd like. Just let Linda know beforehand so she can make enough for four. I hope to see you there. So, did you need anything else? Oh, old man Harris? Don't mind him. He's gone, you know, a little soft in his later years. Ever since Gladys died, he just hasn't been the same. Did he now? I've talked to him about spreading rumors. I guess I'll just have to have another little chat with him. Every time he does this, he scares our new friends off, and we love people. It's a shame when they slip out of our grubby little paws. <laughs> I work to feed my family just like every red-blooded American man should. Why, a man that can't keep his family fed isn't any kind of man at all. No, sir. Andale, greatest place there is. We win town of the year every year. We've got no end of food and no troubles at all. Yep, there's no better place to raise a family. Yeah, well, he's hit it rough. Ever since his wife died, he just hasn't been enthusiastic about the Andale lifestyle anymore. He stays locked up in his house all day, and the girls bring him his meals. He barely eats enough to stay alive. Poor guy. He's all skin and bones. I'll tell Linda and Junior that you said hello. It's locked for a reason. Don't get any ideas. They're crazy. 
crazy. Crazy, I tell you. Get out of town while you still can. Welcome to Potomac Attire.
Another satisfied customer. Can you spare enough for a drink? I could really use one. Hey there.
Stay away from me. What do you want? Are you one of them? I suppose it doesn't matter if I tell you. I used to be a slave. I saw a slaver on this ship. His name is Sister. I'm afraid he's after me. Really? Oh, thank you. Can you help me? I've been so worried with him around. I can hardly sleep at night. Thank you. I'll go to Flack and Shrapnel's just before closing. I don't have anything to give you, but I think I can trust you with a secret. If you ever go up north, there is a secret slave hideout called Temple of the Union. You might find them useful. Welcome to Potomac Attire. Let me or a security officer know if you see anything out of the ordinary. Welcome to... Decided to check out the shop, eh? Need to do... Another satisfied customer. Penny, he can kiss my ass. We've got plenty of bottle caps. Let me in, goddammit. How many times do we have to go through this? You're not getting in. 
I can stand here all day yelling at you through this damn speaker if I have to. I've already told you Tenpenny won't allow zombies to live here. Who the hell are you calling a zombie? You're definitely not human, that's for damn sure. And for the last time, no zombies allowed. Can't you tell the difference between me and a feral? Fine, I'll show you the goddamn difference. Just you wait. You'll get yours, all of you. Hey, then. I'm really not in the mood, so leave me alone. What are you looking at? I thought I told you to get the hell out of here. Tenpenny doesn't want your goddamn caps, and I don't want the goddamn headache. For the last time, get your rotten, ugly, goddamn ghoul ass off Mr. Tenpenny's private property. What? No, just those damn ghouls. Sorry, thought you were one of them. Ghoul or not, I must inform you that you are trespassing on Alistair Tenpenny's private property. Renders an official business only. <laughs> That's rich. What would a man like Tenpenny want to do with a waste rat like you? Just a minute. Let's not be hasty. If Tenpenny is interested in what you have to say, I suppose you should get your chance. Though he normally conducts all his business through Mr. Burke. If Tenpenny doesn't want to talk to you, then you best leave him alone. If you bother Mr. Tenpenny or any of his residents, I will be very glad to forcibly show you out. Do we understand each other? Good. Welcome to Tenpenny Tower. Don't do anything stupid. Mr. Tenpenny isn't taking callers. Hold on there a minute. Oh, all right, I'll let you in, but if Tenpenny hollers because he isn't expecting you, you're dead. Fancy that! A visitor! I seldom get visitors, which is a tiresome shame, because I'm usually relentlessly bored out of my right mind. All of these confounded people fluster about like I'm made of eggshells and about to fall to pieces in any moment. I'm surprised they even let you in. So, what do you think of my fine tower here? It's quite the jewel of the wasteland, isn't it? I dare say I'm quite proud of it myself. I say, must you be so caustic? Come now, a lot of work went into turning this husk of a tower into a place people can call home. I've had help, of course. Especially in Mr. Burke, an absolute gem of a man. He certainly has a way of getting done what needs to get done. Then it was a matter of getting the right type of tenants with the right type of assets, and the rest is, as they say, history. Oh, it's impolite for a gentleman to talk about himself, but... I'd hope this magnificent tower would speak volumes. Some might say that Tenpenny Tower is my crowning achievement, but no, no, my dear girl, it is just the beginning. Righto, run along now.
good to see you.
Hey, be more careful. Yeah. A pleasure. Thief! Well now, if it isn't the little saint from the vault. We've been looking for you. Someone's put quite a price on your head. What? You think you can walk around the wasteland doing the things that you do, and there isn't going to be someone who takes notice? Such a shame. I hear that you could have been something useful. Ah, well. Time to die. Ha! I love it when they go down fighting. Over here! Ha! There you are. Ha! 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 I want this! Once her!
not be alarmed. Yes? Hey! It appears you've been wounded, madam. May I suggest you seek me? Hey, friend. You came in here on your own power, so you... You done? Good. something What do you need? I sure am missing 
Well, all right. Let me count out your cap. Fiddle with any interesting technology lately? Oh, great! Reactivating long dormant technology is definitely a good step towards the survival of humanity as a whole. Then again, maybe it's more dangerous if it's active but uncontrolled. How did it turn out? Say what you will about the dead folks of the past, but they designed a lot of their stuff so even idiots could use it. Uh, no offense, of course. It helps to have the right tool for the job. Failing that, go with the right tool to cheat at the job. Like a pulse grenade. Here, have a couple. Yes, Rivet City's in particular. It's the most successful survivor settlement around, but no one here really knows how it started. Of course, that's why it's important to know how a place like that succeeded. So I need you to go there and do some researching. Oh, now I can't wait for what you find out down there. And check around to make sure you're hearing the real deal. Absolutely. Good hunting. The caps all spend the same. I knew you'd change your mind. Just remember, Sharon is a valuable asset to me and he doesn't come cheap. Are you ready to deal? I suppose that could work. Yes. Yes, here's the contract. And I'll take my payment in full. I'll give you the pleasure of informing Sharon yourself. Talk to. You purchased my contract from Razrakal. So, I am no longer in his service. That is good to know. Please, wait here. I must take care of something. That's right, Sharon. Have you come to say goodbye? Yes. All right, let's go. As you wish. Oh my god, he shot Osrakal. Jesus Christ, 123 years was the fucking point. Dude, oh, she I, buzzed. I thought Sharon liked Osrakal. Did you see that?
over here if you want to live. Watch out for the mines. Uh, quick, they're coming. Lock and load. They'll be here any second. Yes, what is it? Very well. Whew. Say, you're pretty decent in a firefight. Well, with what I do for a living, you need to be. Sorry, I'm being a complete asshole. I'm Sydney. It's good to meet a fellow relic hunter. Come on. You and I both know this is where the Declaration of Independence is stashed. No need to be coy about it. Good old Abraham Washington sent you on the same suicide mission he sent me on. Only problem is... You're not going to get it without my help. Like I said, Abraham Washington, that's who. He's got plenty of caps and all kinds of valuables for trade. The guy lives over in Rivet City, runs some sort of museum there. He buys all sorts of junk like this. Bring the declaration back with me, and we split the reward right down the middle. How's that grab ya? Smart move. Okay. The Declaration is secured in the Archive's strong room underground. There's a concealed cargo lift right here in the center of the rotunda. I've spent a few days hacking the lock with my remote terminal. When you're ready, punch in the password, and let's get going. I got your back.
men, today I address you with a message of utmost urgency. Our defenses have been breached. Men, we can't let the enemy's progress dissuade us from our task. Man utility gates bypass security, if you can get through them. What's up? Nope, I'm fine.
The enemy is out. You've breached our defenses, evaded our best soldiers, and you've raided my home. But I have not yet begun to fight. I cannot allow you to steal our freedom. The Declaration must remain here. It is our symbol of hope, the one thing that cries out, we are a free nation. Then my reputation precedes me. Good. That should make you well aware that I am not to be trifled with, and that my loyalty to the States is legendary. I know your fighting prowess far exceeds my own, but I will still duel you to the death if I must. What will it be, then? Rapiers? Pistols at dawn? Out with it! This is no mere document, madam. This is the doctrine laid down by my fellow members of the Second Continental Congress. It absolves us of the tyranny of King George III of Great Britain. It is, perhaps, the greatest symbol of this free nation. Petty lies and deceit may be the way of Great Britain's crown, but I will not succumb to such tomfoolery. Since it appears you wish to resolve this without bloodshed, may I suggest you stand down and surrender? I can promise that you will be treated well, in a manner accustomed to any member of the Royal Army. I've been patient and I've spoken to you like a gentleman. But if all you understand is violence, then let justice be done and let the Almighty decide the rightful winner. Defend yourself! I'll try and hide you on this!
If you want any of it. Pleasure doing business with you. I'm expecting great things from you. Please ask them. After all, knowledge is power. Well, um, this is quite embarrassing, actually. I sent someone like yourself after the declaration. She did some of the research for me, but now I haven't seen her in a few months. I wouldn't worry about it. Many have died for causes far less grand than what you're about to undertake. Oh, my lord, I never expect... I mean, I am utterly shocked. You have earned your place in the annals of American history. Yes, indeed. You will be remembered for this great day. I understand the road was difficult. So, allow me to present you with an extra bonus to perhaps whet your appetite for future endeavors. Enjoy your reward, my friend. You've earned it. I'm Belle Bonnie, and this is the Muddy Rudder. I'll tell you what I tell all the fresh meat. Don't start anything down here, or I'll have Brock kick your ass. You must be drunk. Are you gonna order, or what? Go talk to Vera if you want gossip. I don't talk bad about folks. Oh yeah, he's a mess. I'm glad I'm not in Cindy's shoes. What'll you have? I'll be right here when you get thirsty. Stay chill, dude.
Things are going well. See you today. All of us here thank you for everything you've done. For us, for the wastes. We pulled together and got you this. It's the best we could do. Please take it, with our thanks. Certainly, it's the least I could do after all you've done. You'd best have cancer. You done? Good. You done? Good. What can I get you? Enjoy. Yeah, what is it?
Oh, shit. 
that way. Citadel guard duty is such bullshit. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Then knock that off. Wait there. Ah, uh, come on. We just can't. We're clear out here. Stand down.
way. I guess it's my turn to thank you. Anyway, the area's secure, so you're free to talk to Three Dog if you need to. I'm sure. You can handle yourself, I'll give you that. But let's not get carried away. I'll take that as a compliment. If we don't try to keep the mutants from killing everyone and everything in the Capital Wasteland, who will? The Brotherhood does its best, but sometimes it takes a little something... special. That's where the Lion's pride comes in. Well, the Brotherhood needed a secure outpost, and the guy who runs the radio station needed to not get his head ripped off by super mutants. It's a mutually beneficial relationship. Three Dog is the man in charge. He keeps that signal broadcasting pretty much single-handedly. He's, um, interesting. I'll give him that much. She died well. In the end, that's all that really matters. Watch yourself out there. Looks like it's all clear. Unlocking outer doors. The look on your face says it all. You're wondering who the heck this guy is and why you should care. Well, prepare to be enlightened. I am Three Dog, jockey of discs and teller of truths, lord and master over the finest radio station to grace the wastes, Galaxy News Radio. And you, well, I know who you are. Heard about you leaving that vault, traveling the unknown, just like dear old dad, huh? Met him already. Hey, when you're in the good fight, you gotta give it all you got and never ever hold back. Always dazzle him, I always say. Always dazzle him and spread the word. Imagine a picture, okay? A picture of the Capital Wasteland. All that brick and rock. A whole lot of nothing, right? There's people out there trying to just barely make it from day to day, fighting to stay alive and make something out of what they got. But then you've got all kinds of shit. Slavers, super mutants, raiders. They all want a slice of the pie too, and aim to take it by force. Well, holy shit. Aren't you a chip off the old block? You are as smart as your dad. Since you know all about this cause, no need to explain the effect. Let's get you on your way. Oh, come on. You're a spitting image of the guy. He's been here before, and now you're here. Doesn't take a genius to figure it out. You want to find your dad. And it just so happens his location is known to yours truly. But if you want to know more, you're going to have to contribute to the good fight. You want to find your dad. And it just so happens his location is known to yours truly. He was here, at Galaxy News. We had a great conversation. He's a real stand-up guy. If you want to know more, you're gonna have to contribute to the good fight. Well, your dad is some sort of scientist type. Some kind of egghead or something. You really think if you find him, he'd help our cause? When your dad passed through here, I spent a good long time talking to him about all kinds of stuff. He mentioned some scientific mumbo-jumbo, which didn't make much sense to me. Hmm. Something about a Project Purity. He also said something about going to visit a Dr. Lee in Rivet City. Then, he left in a hurry. You've never heard of Rivet City? Wow. Just... Wow. Well, a whole bunch of eggheads got together and turned a beached aircraft carrier into a town. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? Just follow the river south from here. There's no way you can miss it.
Yes? Yes? Hey. Hey. Decided to check out the... Pleasure doing business with you. Fred, I can't help you, pal. Been here for years, but all I know about the history is that it's a safe place to settle down. Maybe Bannon can help you out. He sure acts like he knows it all.
find me. Hey. scientific center in the capital wasteland I find your look dr. Zimmer we've been over this we don't know about your runaway robot and we don't care this lab is dedicated to solving real problems yes 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 but dr. Lee dr. Lee is trying to save lives and your constant interruptions are interfering with those efforts now please stand aside I'm sure the good doctor's work with water purification is fascinating. But if you only knew what was at stake, the technology in that android... What's at stake? You won't tell me what's at stake. Vagaries and secrecy, a robot's a robot, Zimmer, no matter how shiny the paint job. Now, please. Ignorance and facetiousness. That's all you people are good for. Shiny paint job, indeed. You can't even imagine the Commonwealth's accomplishments. You know, if you're so smart, maybe you could help us, hmm? But no, that never even crossed your mind. Go peddle your selfishness somewhere else. Fine, but I'm not leaving. Not until I've spoken to Dr. Lee. I'll be here when she's ready to abandon her chemistry set and talk real science. You there. What are you, some kind of lab assistant? No, you look a bit more weathered. Are you by any chance for hire? To the point. I like that. Well, as it turns out, I've misplaced some very sensitive property. Ah, a woman of action. I knew I picked the right person for the job. Let me be clear. You won't be looking for a lost puppy or family heirloom. You'll be searching for an android. Do you know what an android is? No, I imagine you don't. You see, we've moved beyond those primitive buckets you call robots and have created artificial intelligence, sentient machines, artificial persons that think and feel what we program them to. Occasionally, their programming miscalculates. They get confused and wander off. Forget everything you know about robots. Those buckets are mere children's toys compared to the real thing. Androids have fake skin and blood and are programmed to simulate human behavior, like breathing. They can even eat and digest food realistically. Like I said, I suspect he's had facial reconstruction and possibly even a mind wipe. Search the offices of doctors or techies for android information. If he's come into contact with these people, there may be records. Start with Dr. Preston. He lives on this leaky boat. See if he knows anything. He's a doctor, after all. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm busy trying to ignore my surroundings. Of course you do. Hello. What do you want? Look, this is a restricted area. I'm tired of telling you people. I... It's you. My heavens, you look so much like him. You're James's daughter, aren't you? What are you doing here? Well, yes, of course I do. Don't you know who I am? I suppose James never told you. Typical. I'm Dr. Madison Lee. I worked with your father many years ago. Your mother as well, in fact. You'll have to forgive me, this has all been very stressful. What with your father suddenly showing up here after being gone for so long. You have to understand that I... We put all of that behind us. Project Purity, our work, all of it. We've moved on, even if your father hasn't. You mean you haven't? I assumed he sent you here. For that matter, aren't you supposed to be in a vault? James said he left you there. 
Did you? I was under the impression that's exactly the opposite of what he wanted for you. Well, you won't find him here. He's come and gone already. Your father insisted that we return to work on Project Purity. I tried telling him too much time has passed. There's no way it would work. Predictably, he refused to listen to me. He says he can prove it will work and head it off to the old lab. I'm sorry, I don't know what else to tell you. It's in the old Jefferson Memorial Building, northwest of here. Please, don't go after him. It was foolish of him to even think about going there alone. I suppose so. I worked with them for several years until... until your mother died and your father decided it was time to leave. What else do you want to know? James? He was very driven, determined to change the world. <laughs> well, we all were back then, I suppose. He was focused on two things, really. Making Project Purity work, and your mother. When she died, I think... I think he gave up. I know he wanted to keep you safe, but I think part of what he did was run away. But it seems that he never really was able to get over the idea. I'm frankly shocked that he waited all this time, and wants to try again. Yes, your mother was... Well, she was a good woman. A very dedicated scientist. Your father loved her very much. It was a shame that she died. She had been excited to meet you. Complications from childbirth. None of us were expecting it. We weren't as prepared as we could have been. You have to understand, we were struggling with scavenged, derelict equipment. We did everything we could. Yes, well, um, I'm sorry it wasn't enough. Okay. Project Purity, we called it. What do you want to know? It was simple, really. Fresh, clean water for everyone. Such a simple idea, and yet so impossible to realize. The plan was to build a facility that could purify all the water in the tidal basin at once. No radiation, no muck, just clear water. It just turned out to be more difficult than we anticipated. We had the basic principles down, we understood most of the science behind it, but the radiation in the area is so pervasive. Small-scale tests were fine, but any time we tried to test the process on a larger scale, it was just... too much. Maybe if we'd had more time, or better equipment. Okay. Good luck finding your father.
Hey. Good to see you. Hey. That's secure. Decided to check out the ship. Thanks. For a reason. Wanna do some buff out? Maybe a little psycho. Good to see you. You can't just... Yes?
decided to check out the shop. Thanks. Welcome to Potomac Atari. Another satisfying. Everything looks okay here. If you want to go. If you want any of this shit. Hey. Yes, that's locked. Anything going and on? Yes, I can see you lying. Decided to check out the... Give me a shout if you need...
off to Vault 112 to search for anything of bronze that might help me get this purifier up and running. All I know is that it's west of some place called Evergreen Mills, and it's well hidden in some sort of garage. But I'll find it. I have to. It's so close. But that's the story of Project Purity, isn't it? An eternity of almost theirs. Let's see if Braun has the missing puzzle piece.
to Vault 112, resident. According to sensors, you have arrived 202.3 years behind schedule. Please redress in your Vault Tech-issued Vault suit before proceeding. If you have misplaced your suit, I am authorized to distribute a new one. Once dressed, please proceed down the stairs to the main floor so that you may enter your assigned Tranquility Lounger. A tran Tranquility Lounger is available. Please be seated. Someone new to play with. What good luck I have lately. I was just starting to get bored. Oh, we're going to have so much fun. I'm Betty. I live here on Tranquility Lane. Want to play a game? We're going to play a game now, silly. That's what's going on. Gee, I don't know. What's he like? You mean, the man that came here is your daddy? And you're only here because you're looking for him? Oh, this is just too much fun. We're going to have such a good time. Let's play right now. I knew you would. It's a really simple game. All you have to do is make Timmy Newsbum cry. He's the only other kid that lives here besides you. He's a big crybaby. You'll see. Make him cry, and then come back here so we can talk some more. Hey there, little lady. How's it going? My boy Timmy, good kid. Straight laced, good head on his shoulders. Never been in so much as a fist fight. We're a close knit family. Don't know what any of us would do if something happened. Have a great day.
You've saved me. I was afraid I'd be trapped in there forever. Oh, it's so good to see you, but what are you doing here? Well, I'm glad you did. This certainly wasn't how I expected things to turn out. I wasn't ready for brawn, or I might have fared better. It certainly is. It's nice to feel that I'm on two legs again. And thanks to Dr. Braun, I know that Project Purity isn't lost after all. I was right about Braun. The technology he developed is unstable, even dangerous. But it can be adapted for Project Purity. I need to return to Rivet City and talk with Madison. If we can find a Gek, we can make Project Purity work. Yes. What I've learned, Madison is sure to see that we can finally succeed where we failed so many years ago. I'd like you to come with me. I'd like you to be there when we finally open the floodgates. That's my girl. Let's hurry. Now that I know what we need, I want to get back to work as soon as possible. Of course, honey. What's on your mind? I wanted you to be safe. I didn't want this for you. A life out here in this godforsaken war zone. I couldn't tell you what I was doing because I didn't want you following me. A plan which clearly was not as successful as I imagined it would be. What? No, no, of course not. I just... This is important work. Clean water can change the lives of so many thousands of people. It's worth the risk to help them. I can understand that you're angry. You have a right to be. Perhaps the choice I made wasn't the right one. At the time, I thought I was doing what was best for you. So am I, my love. While this isn't what I had in mind, it's good to have you with me. It started as an idea, really. Remember the Bible passage your mother loved so much? Free, clean water for everyone. What a difference it could make in the lives of everyone here in the Wastes. Over time, that idea took the form of a purifier, not like the one in the vault, though. This one was gigantic, capable of purifying millions of gallons of water at once. We used the old Jefferson Memorial for the location, right on DC's tidal basin. Someday soon, I hope you'll see it work. In the year before you were born, things became difficult. There had always been something of a mutant problem in the city, but it became worse. They attacked more frequently and more aggressively. Support for the project eroded as time went on, when we couldn't produce any significant results. Progress came to a halt, and then you were born. Your mother and I had talked about what to do when that time came, but then I, we, lost her, and I had to make a decision. I chose to leave. From what I understand, things happened quickly after that. It became too dangerous for the others to stay, and so the project was abandoned. Dr. Lee and her team left for what became Rivet City, and Project Purity has sat waiting ever since. I understand that you have reason to question a good many things I've told you over the years. But your mother, I've never lied to you about what happened, not once. She died giving birth to you. It was a difficult time. She was so eager to meet you, to make a place for you in the world. If nothing else, please believe that she loved you very much. Be careful, sweetie.
me. There is much work to be done. I help Dr. Lee when she needs equipment moved. I am no scientist. I just help with the heavy things. Hey, be more careful. Hello? How the hell did you get in here? Hmm. <laughs> I suppose you can't be all that bad if you made it this far without dying. This is the part where you tell me what the hell you are doing bothering an old man who obviously wants to be left alone. Get on with it already. I live here. It's where I do my work. And it's far away from Dr. Lee and all those other monkeys dressed up like scientists. You made it past my defenses, which proves you aren't a dummy. And you haven't killed me. So I suppose you aren't here to do that. I suppose you can hang around if you want. Just don't touch anything. What? I have better things to do than yak about those backstabbers up topside. Now get going! Like I care what you savages read. Shove off and leave an old man to rest in peace. The secret kind. Well, if you must know, I'm an electrician and computer expert. And I'm a bit of a surgeon. Really, the most gifted scientist you'll find. 
<laughs> I'm the guy that got Rivet City up and running in the first place. And after all that, Lee and her gang of flunkies pushed me out. Ha! <laughs> Project Purity, indeed. But a bunch of morons. They can't even clean some water. Don't let your guard down. Welcome to Potomac Attire. Dr. Lee, Chief Harkness, and I are all on the council. We meet every Monday morning. I can be very influential, if you know what I mean. Far more than Seagrave Holmes. So you've met him, eh? Well, he wants to replace me on the council. Now I can't have that. No siree. He's a shady character, I just can't prove it. If someone were to find something incriminating in his room, well, let's just say I would be very appreciative. Why, I practically set this whole place up. When I got here 12 years ago, it was just a handful of dead enders squatting in a rusted out rowboat. Now I'm on the council, and with my leadership, we're the strongest settlement in the wastes. Of course, a few of those dead enders still stick around, but who'd want to leave? Well, yes, but it was hardly any place of importance until I arrived on the scene. That's all ancient history now. No one would ever care about it. If you insist on wasting your time on that, you could try that bartending old crone down below, Belle Bonnie. Come. Nice to see you again. Thanks. Well, I don't really know, to tell the truth. How does any city get started, really? But I've heard Bannon talk about how he was responsible for its success. So I'd ask him about it. Morning. What the hell do you want? History? What, not enough shit around here already? You need to dig up more? Don't know if it ever had an official start. It's just been here forever. Stuck in the river and full of assholes. No, I can't fucking well share one. What sort of moron are you? But fine. It'll get you out of my face. Go down to Pinkerton's shed in the broken off bow of the ship. If he decides to give you a history lesson, it's no business of mine. Now get the hell out of my bar.
Stay sharp. They're everywhere. What? I have... Ha. Sounds like you've been poking around, all right. I'm surprised any of those reprobates even remember me. Maybe they still laugh about how they edged me out of the council back then. But you can set the record straight. For that, you have to go all the way back to when remnants of the Naval Research Institute cleared the Meyer Lurks off this wreck. About 40 years ago, we were looking for new lab space, and this bucket of bolts just happened to have a well-preserved science bay on it. Everything else just grew up around that lab once we got it up and running. The science team was led by one H. Pinkerton. That lasted until about 18 years ago, when those ambitious backbiters like Lee and her little team showed up. She came in with her big purity project pipe dream, and my whole staff started working with her, those traitors. She even took my seat on the council. By then, I was glad to leave it behind. But hell if I'm leaving the city I made great. Who cares? It's some hydroponics pipe dream that Lee's been working on forever. Waste of time and effort, I say. Apparently, though, my teams cared more about it than they did about little things like defense systems or making this ship float again. Treacherous bastards, all of them. Of course I do. A good scientist always keeps track of their data. Here, they probably don't even remember, but I kept the records of that first council meeting. Take them, if it'll put them in their place. Don't let your guard down. Hey there. Any luck finding out how Rivet City got started? Aha! Not just as easy as asking around, was it? Good information takes real work to uncover after all. So, tell me all about it. Hmm. With the protected location and resources that came from those scientific advances, I can definitely see how it grew so quickly. A bit of smarts leads to a big reward, huh? Speaking of which, in thanks, have a few of these. For the next time, you've got to be quick on your wits. Oh, and I'll let the Rivet City traders know they'll be favorably mentioned in the book. You'll get a discount buying gear from them in the future. Yes, that concludes our exceptional expert endeavor. I have to admit, I was worried it would go over some people's heads, but it should be fine. For all your hard work, I want you to have this mini nuke. I kept meaning to use it to dig a well, but honestly, it just makes me nervous. Now, I just need to do a few last tweaks, and it'll be ready to print and distribute. Thanks for all the help. So cynical. No, no. I can take care of all that with the few traders I know. What makes you think I'd force you to handle something so dangerous? Now, you should just lie back and bask in the praise for helping with the book. Oh, it's great! Why, with the information here, we'll save hundreds of lives, maybe even thousands. I'll share these with the traders, and soon everyone will know about the Wasteland Survival Guide. But first, here, the very first copy of our book goes to you. 
I couldn't have done it without you, my wasteland survival expert. Absolutely. Good hunting! Yeah, what is it?
Hey, who are you? Right. What do you want? Well, you can never be too careful. Be warned, it's not safe here. Super mutants have attacked recently and carried off some of our friends. Come in, just don't cause any trouble, okay? Ah, fellow student. It's my pleasure to offer hot death in a variety of exciting flavors. Take your pick. Give me a shout if you Hello. Hello. Hang on, you're not one of them. I nearly blasted you in two. Get over here before they spot you. Now what the hell are you doing all the way out here? That's great, but I got bigger problems than being the town post office right now. 
The shit's about to hit the fan in this cesspool, and I don't think I can stop them. Well, at first, they do their typical gang bullshit. You know, break stuff and make lots of noise. But they always kept their distance. But this last time, they went too far. They killed all of our Brahmin. I mean, that's our lifeblood out here, you know. Ah, look, you can call me crazy if you want. But there is something odd about those creeps. I mean, they got the guns and they got the muscle. Why don't they just bust down our doors and take us out already? We're really in a bad way and could use some help. I don't want to take my eyes off the ramp here. There's no telling when the family will return. Can you do me a favor and check on the other people's houses here? You know, make sure they're doing okay? Speak with Davis West, Karen Shenzi, and Ken Ewers. There used to be more families living here. Most of them have dismantled their shacks and moved on to greener pastures. Those that are still living here are keeping themselves indoors, thanks to the family. I think they live somewhere east or northeast of here. Problem is, they always travel in the dark, so I can't see exactly where they go. There's all kinds of places they could be hiding, like Hamilton's Hideaway, the old Moonbeam Cinema, or Northwest Seneca Metro Station. Just watch yourself. I've got an itchy trigger finger. Hello? Is this the mailman? Oh, I do hope my fall catalog has arrived. Oh, Evan, he's such a gentleman. Please, do come inside. Let me unlock the door for you. What the hell are you doing in here? Get the fuck out! Oh, for the love of... Look, she's dumber than a bag of hammers, okay? If you want to talk to anyone, you need to talk to me. So what the fuck do you want? We're great. Just peachy. I love sitting in my house with my thumb up my ass. Tell Mr. King that sitting here all day isn't going to make us any safer. We need to take action. Well, he's town mayor or sheriff or whatever he calls himself. He calls all the shots. When he says to get the heck indoors and stay put, we do that. Everyone is keeping themselves safe from the family. If I was you, I'd do the same. You want to know more? Talk to Evan King. Good. Now get out. Yes. Who is it? Oh, he did? Well, it's about damn time he did something. Come on in, I'll unlock the door. It's nice to see a friendly new face around here. It's been a long time. The name's Karen Shenzi. Scared out of my mind. I'm glad he's checking on us, but until someone nips the problem in the bud, we may as well stay inside forever. He's a spineless wimp. His best solution to the family is to stay inside our homes and hide. What does that tell them? It tells them that we can be pushed around whenever they want. I'm sick of it, and I'm sick of King. We're scared shitless. Evan King's got everyone so worked up about the family, no one wants to set foot outside. That asshole runs the show. But does he really do anything about our problem? No. All they do is terrorize us. They taunt us to open our doors, throw bottles at our houses, and scream at us. If I knew King had my back, I'd step outside and show them just how I feel about their visits, especially after this last attack. Sure.
What did they tell you? Everyone okay? The family must have gotten to them in the last attack. Sons of bitches. Damn it! If only we had more men, we could stand up to them. I'm sick of them terrorizing this town. Wait a minute. When you searched the West's place, did you find their son Ian's body? This has to be the work of the family. I've caught that weirdo leader of theirs talking to Ian down by the river. Look, I know I've asked a lot of you already, but you have to find that kid. He deserves better than all this. Thanks, kid. You're all right. Next.
That's close enough. What the hell are you doing wandering around here? Curiosity can get a Wastelander killed. I'm going to let you through, but you'll have to talk to Mr. Walker first. Follow me. Oh, and stay off the memorial steps. They have orders to shoot anyone that gets too close. The dirt path is safe. We are grateful for any help you can give us. So the super mutants are dead? This is wonderful news! Now all you have to do is get Caleb his picture and we can begin our journey. What? 
They must have found out our plan somehow. We are truly grateful for your intervention. Now we can proceed with our plans for the memorial. Here to see the good doctor? Let's see what the good doctor has in his magic bag, shall we? Another satisfaction. Another human with a death wish. Welcome to the mall, tourist. Nice to meet you, too. I'm the sentry for Underworld. City of ghouls. Inside the museum. For a tourist, you're pretty clueless. My name's Willow, by the way. Sure did. Underworld. It's right inside the Museum of History, then through the Big Skull. Most of the residents ain't crazy about humans, but they'll sell to you, fix you up so long as your caps are good and you ain't a ghoul hater. Those knuckle draggers? Nah, they don't bother us ghouls. Maybe they see us as kin or something, I don't know. Now there's other assholes. Yeah, you know, those humans like you. Well, maybe not like you, I don't know, but humans all the same. The Brotherhood of Steel guys with their testosterone and power armor. Those psycho talent company mercs. Those other assholes. Come on, here you are in the mall of our nation's fine capital. Taking in the sights, visiting the monuments. Face it, you're a tourist. 
Till next time, Sightseer. Would you look at that? We got us a smooth skin visitor. Ooh, we we ain't seen one of your type in a long time. Smooth skin? You know, because your skin is so smooth and tasty. Relax, I'm just kidding. But I had you going, didn't I? You're in underworld, smooth skin. It's the only safe place for we ghouls in DC. We're here, out of sight and out of mind. The mutants leave us alone, and the slavers usually don't come this far into the city, so it's not bad. Really, the Brotherhood of Steel is the only thing we have to worry about. So long as we don't leave Underworld, that is. Bastards. They don't seem to be able to tell us apart from the super mutants. Or maybe they just don't care. They see us and shoot on sight. At least they have the common courtesy to miss most of the time. Still. Bigots. That's right. As long as you don't bother us, we won't bother you. Feel free to come and go, trade, sleep, whatever. Just make sure that you leave whatever trouble is following you at the door, because we don't want it. So enjoy your stay, smooth skin. Enjoy your stay. Just try and keep from shooting up the place. We got a nice little deal going on down here. We'd like to keep it nice. Me? I keep every hunk of old rusted pre-war garbage around here in operating condition. We've got lights, water, and ventilation all running off the old crap they used to keep this place going for the tourists. I've managed to keep it going so far, but, well, I'm not sure how long I can keep it up. We've scavenged just about all the scrap metal from all the places we can safely get to. We're scraping the bottom of the barrel here. Hell, not before long I'm gonna have to disassemble poor old Cerberus for parts. Hey, you get around, don't you? Tell you what, you bring me back any scrap metal you find out there, and I'll trade you whatever I can. We can work out a trade. We've got some stuff around here that we don't need, but a smooth skin like you might make use of it. Well, all right. That's good to hear, stranger. Just come on back to me when you've gathered some scrap metal. You'll find it just about anywhere. On junked robots, in old buildings, you name it. And not a moment too soon. Let me know if you have any of that scrap metal to sell. Hello there. Pleasure to meet you. I'm Quinn. Me? No, not at all. I'm used to your people. Truth is, I spend most of my time away from Underworld. You too, stranger. I know a lot of people around here don't take kindly to humans wandering around, but I've met a lot of your people in my travels. Yeah, just east of here. Bunch of guys with guns are holed up there. Scanning. What's going on? Mm, taste it better going down. Hey there. Dr. Barrows at your service. What brings you to the chop shop? Come to lend me a hand, I hope. I can always use fresh human samples. You haven't heard? I'm the foremost authority on ghoul evolution. I want to know what makes us tick. Something doomed us to this rotting form, and I aim to discover what it is. 
So, I need samples of human skin, organs, and other parts to make the experiments valid. Pity. Well then, what can I do for you? I think I can help you out. Welcome to the Chop Shop. I'm Nurse Graves, Dr. Borrow's assistant. Don't let our place's name fool you. The doctor is very good with injuries, dismemberments, and trauma. If you require any stim packs or blood packs, let me know. Bye. I'm on a break. I'll be back in a bit if you need some food. Yes. Yeah, what is it? Oh! Oh my, someone new. I'm so sorry. You must think me terribly rude. Welcome! Welcome to Carol's place. I'm Carol. It's not much I know, but it's mine. So if you need anything, just let me know. Greta will get you any food you want, and I handle the rooms. It's so good to have someone new here, especially a pretty young smooth skin like yourself. I hope you like it here. Gob? Yes, of course. He's my son. Well, not really. Not like you would think of a son. We ghouls don't really work like that, but I love him like he's my own. Do you know him? Have you seen him? Is he all right? Oh, that's wonderful news. I'm so glad. If you see him, please tell him that his mother misses him and loves him and that I hope he's happy. But he shouldn't come visit. It's too dangerous. No, no, he should stay put where he is. Oh, that's such a long story. You couldn't possibly want to hear about that. Well, okay. But it's nothing special. I was born in 2051, so yes, that makes me a pre-war ghoul. I do. I was in a shelter with my father when the bombs hit. In D.C., we had the luxury of getting a warning after the West Coast was... gone. I was just a little girl then. We couldn't afford a space in one of the vaults. I remember filing down into that shelter, my father rushing me in. He stopped to help this one family. And I looked up and called his name. There was a flash of light brighter than anything you can imagine. I woke up a few hours later. The first thing I did was run up to where my father had been. He... he was gone. But the strangest thing... There was his shadow, burned into the wall, so crisp and clear, like he was standing next to me. The heat had burned it into the concrete. The city was on fire for weeks, maybe months, I don't know. I hid down here in the museum. It was the closest building to the shelter I was in. But I could hear what was happening above. 
people howling like animals, chaos, looting, killing. It's like every foul thing inside of them came out. It was a nightmare. I... I don't want to talk about it. You tell the same story for 200 years, you'll feel pretty uninteresting too. Don't let these people get to you. How's it going? Hey, how is it going? Yeah, what is it? <sighs> Sit. Well now, looky here. We got us a smooth skin that I ain't ever seen before. I'm Azrakal, and this... this is the Ninth Circle. Folks got problems, and I got liquor to sell them. Well, liquor and a few other pick-me-ups, huh? You need anything, uh, you just let me know. That's Sharon. Let's just say, well, he's a loyal employee. Don't mess with me. And he won't mess with you. No, he is not. Ma'am, you insult me. I do not believe in slavery. It is an abomination. I am a firm believer in personal choice. To force another person into bondage is unthinkable. Chains are earned, never forced. Sharon made some choices that landed him in my employ. The matters of our contract is between him and I. No one else. His company is rather refreshing, isn't it? But don't mistake his brevity for stupidity. That would be very unwise. Underestimating an opponent has been the last mistake of far too many individuals throughout history. Oh, would you now? He's a highly valuable asset to me and to the Ninth Circle. What did you have in mind? I suppose we could do that, uh, although you might not like the deal that I have to offer. You see, I don't like competition. Not at all. It goes against every principle that I have as a businessman. So the fact that there is another source for booze in town troubles me. Greta, the waitress over at Carol's. I want you to kill her. No stomach for hard work, eh? No matter. If you don't want to do the job, then come up with the cash. Otherwise, I'll just hang on to this contract. Everyone's got troubles, and everyone brings them to me. Watch your step. <laughs> hey. Oh. Oh. Hey. Look at that. A human. With hair. Hey. You think we can do something about that? Yeah, man. That's what I do. I cut hair. I know, I know you look around here and there ain't a lot of work to show off, right? These corpses only got half a head of the stuff, so I never get a chance to work on a full head. Come on. No charge. 
Well, yeah. So, what else do I have to do except get high? You think that I need to be sober to cut a ghoul's hair? Half the work is cutting the skin off. These guys don't care how they look anyway. They just humor me. Remember, no chop. Watch it.
I hope there's enough today. You have a picture. And such a large one, too. I'll have no problems restoring the memorial with this. Thank you. You are truly a good person. Everything is done? I can hardly believe it. We are finally going to realize the dream. We'll start out within the hour. We'll meet you at the site. So many others refuse to help us. Looking for that special something? If the clothes make the man, then here are the means to remake yourself. Pleasure doing business with you. Good to see you.
Oh, I just love to see your pretty face smiling at me. Absolutely miserable. Pull up a stool and lay down a few caps. Tell Uncle Azrakal all about it. <laughs> Simple barkeep, uh, nothing more. Ah, an educated consumer, my favorite kind. Yes, yes, I think I can help you. Simply step over here, my friend, and I'll show you my stock of more potent goods. As you wish, my friend. Uh, 
Certainly, my friend. I hope you succeed, stranger. You have been good to your word. You are welcome at the Temple of the Union any time. Take these schematics as a token of our gratitude. It's a small thing, but I'll give you ten caps for it. I'll work too. We will enshrine this right away. What a ridiculous hat. I'll pay you twenty-five caps for it. His real voice? How is that possible? I must have it. I'll give you 50 caps for it. We will enshrine this right away. His actual rifle? Such a priceless artifact. You must let me have it. I'll give you 150 caps for it. You're right. I shouldn't quibble over a few extra caps. We will carry this into war against the slavers. To think that even the great Lincoln was felled by an assassin. This is a reminder to all that we must remain vigilant. I would like to buy it from you for 50 caps. It's worth it. We'll hang this where everyone can see it. Bye. I can't wait to set up a school for freed slaves. It's good to see you alive.
Heaven well, madam. Well, it's good to see you anyway. You'd best have cancer because done? Good.
Hold it right there. Nobody's allowed into Paradise Falls except on slaver business. And I get to decide what qualifies as slaver business. Are you kidding me? You've never heard of Paradise Falls? What? Are you right out of the vault? Paradise Falls is home to the slavers. Up there, we sell the slaves that we capture out in the wastes. So, unless you're either buying or selling, piss off. Yeah, well, you don't like it? Keep walking. It's that simple. You got something else to say, or did you just come here to preach at me? Then bring it on, Reverend. What's the matter? They're gonna be mad at you. These slaver guys are mean. Listen, you gotta help us. Me and my friends, we gotta get at home. Can you help? Can you get us out of here? You saw what happened to the other guy. Same thing can happen to me if I try to run away now. Color would pop my head right off. And besides, I don't wanna leave without Squirrel and Penny. I'll hide out here. Can you go in and get him? You're okay for a mungo. Squirrel and Penny are still stuck inside. You need to get the key to the slave pen to get him out. That 40 asshole has one. And so does the boss guy, Eulogy. Go get him!
Man, what a mess. Don't get yourself killed, Mungo. I already shorted out the fence system so our collars won't blow. I bet they won't even notice. We're getting out of here. you. I need to help with this one!
Thanks for getting us out of there, Mungo. We're gonna head back home now. I'd think twice about coming back here if I were you. These guys aren't going to forget you, you know. Hey there. Decided to check out the sh Another set of Welcome to Potomac Atop. Give me a shout if you need anything else.
Hey, don't get any bright ideas about trying anything. We may not look it, but every one of us is a trained killer. Oh, who am I kidding? Look, we're in trouble here. If you want to help, great. If not, just please don't kill anyone while you're here. Well, we've got super mutants out that way and slavers up that way. Take your pick. They both come in here, drag off as many as they can carry, and shoot whoever puts up a fight. The best we can ever hope for is that they get here at the same time and fight over who gets to kill us. And where are we going to go? Megaton won't have us, Lamplight won't take us back, and Rivet City is too far. Besides, the bunch of us can't even hold this town. Can you imagine us schlepping across the wasteland? There aren't many of us left. There's me and Pappy. Red runs the clinic, but she's been taken by the mutant. Kimba does what she can. And there's Bittercup. She's just about as useless as a human being can be. Time Bomb was hurt in the last raid, so he's out. That's about it. The mutants and slavers have taken everyone else. Just us and a couple of guns are all that's left. Yeah, we'll see. What? You've never seen a super mutant before? They're mean and ugly and scary as hell. They came and rounded up a bunch of us and carried them off. God, they must be doing awful things to them. I'd go rescue them, but then who'd defend Big Town? I patrol every day now. And I got a little present for those muties when they come back. You know what it is? This kick-ass gun. That's what. Yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah. They went northeast. Probably to the Germantown police headquarters. They have guns, and they're mean. So you better be careful. You gonna rescue them, or what? That's totally awesome! Yeah, okay. While you're out on your mission, I'll stay here and hold down the fort. Cool! Hey, did I show you my new gun? It's totally awesome. Look, the only place to go is the town hall, and that's just a meeting spot for us. There aren't any traders or anything around here. We all used to live in a place called Little Lamplight, but they have a rule about age. You reach 16, and you're out. Didn't matter, though, because you just pack your things and head to Big Town. All the adults go there, and there's plenty to eat. Plenty to eat, all right, if you like eating bullets. I've lost count of how many times I've been shot at. Keep an eye out for muties.
What's this funny suction hose for? Come on, tell me already. Oh no. What happened? He's... He's dead? I guess I already knew. Besides, I'm too tired to cry anymore. You gotta stop it, so this can't happen to anyone else's family ever again. I wish I had met you a long time ago. And then maybe my dad would still be alive. Thanks for doing all this. I'm feeling better now that you're here. It used to be kind of nice. No one bothered us there. I guess because we were so close to D.C. There were seven of us living there in tall, old brick houses. I think I'm the last one left. Those things took everyone else. Nah, people don't like to stay long in Great Itch. The D.C. ruins aren't a great place to make a home, you know. In fact, Papa was talking about moving on soon. We've been here for maybe a year. Um, besides me and my papa, there was Doc Lesko, who stayed with us, and Will Brandis, and his mama and papa, too. I guess they're all gone now. All right, what is it? Well, they're big, ugly things that crawl around on six legs. They got huge teeth and skitter around, grabbing everything in their path. My papa would always say they're fucking ants. Well, that's what he used to call them anyway. I just call them fire ants. My papa had a gun. He said it hurt those things. But he said they were the dumbest fucking ants he ever saw. He kept telling everyone to shoot for their antenna. Whatever that means. Nah. Those things started coming around only in the last few months. At first, they just crawled around outside our town. But later, they came into town, and, well, you know the rest. All right. Nah, go ahead. It's just nice to talk to anyone about stuff at all. He was a strange man. He paid Papa some caps to help him build a shack and carry a bunch of junk into it. Papa called him an egghead, but his head was shaped regular, so I didn't get it. He spent all of his time in that shack next door to my house. Every time I'd sneak in there, he'd be sitting at that funny looking TV machine with the green words pushing buttons. Nah, he was a nice man, but he never wanted to play with me very much and we barely talked. All I know is he was all gone when the ants started showing up. I think they got him too. I don't know. All kinds of doohickeys. Boxes with lots of lights, some funny glass bottles. Oh wait, he had a big, clunky, shiny man too. That was kind of neat. Yeah? Well, there is Will. He was sort of my friend. And then there was his dad and his mom. Right across the street, actually. It was pretty swell having someone to hang out with so close by. Yeah, Will was super nice to me. He was like a year older than me, I think. He even shared his comic books with me. We explored pretty much every bit of Grey Ditch we could find. I think that's why the ants don't bother me. I have good hiding spots. Well, his mom was nice too. She was kind of quiet, but she always took care of me and my papa when we came over. I think she was sad that my mom was gone. Will's dad was... Well, I don't want to be mean, but he was kind of scary. He was like, always watching me and my dad real careful, like he didn't trust us or something. He always kept staring at us from the windows of his house and typing stuff into his TV box. Will said his dad was like an old soldier or something, but he didn't like doing that stuff, so he quit. Be careful, or those things might get you.
This could be the fifth time I've forgotten the code to my desktop terminal. I really must learn to be more organized. The password for my terminal is Formicidae. How hard could that be for me to remember? Note to self, destroy this holotape as soon as move to new lab is complete. somewhere and you've got a job to do you need to retrieve the package and get it safely to Ronald Lauren and Gerter Shade tell him Grady sent you to get the package you'll need the key I've stashed it inside an old fire hose case in some maintenance closet at Marigold Metro Station the key will unlock the safe that contains the package look for the room marked by a spinning light you can't miss it good luck and hopefully they won't find you too
until you startled me. You really mustn't creep up on people like that. That is precisely why this is the ideal place for my work. Do you realize you're trampling about in a delicately balanced and highly sensitive experimentation area? My experiments are of a complex nature and would take a scientist to explain... Oh wait! I'm a scientist! How marvelous! My foray into reducing the girth of these insectoid creatures is of utmost importance. I intend to generationally reduce their immense stature by way of a pre-birth-induced mutagen. Isn't that clever? My word, you understand perfectly. How marvelous! Well, I'm afraid I made slight miscalculations in the mutagen. Instead of lowering their size, the brood hatched with a new biomechanism. I call their genetic aberration pyrosis, the ability to emit flame from their bodies. I may be able to correct this error, but, but I can't get near my equipment. Your knowledge of experimental procedure surprises me. Indeed, I have skipped a step and directly modified an entire brood. Perhaps I was too hasty. I was so certain it would work. To correct this mistake, I'll need to get to my terminal to modify the mutagen. Since you've offered, allow me to elaborate. My portable terminal is set up in the hatchery chamber near the Ant Queen. If I can reach it, I can continue to work on improving the mutagen. If she were harmed in any way, months of data would be lost. Your objective would be to eliminate what I call her quintet of nest guardians. Filthy little abominations. I've rigged the equipment at my portable terminal to emit what I call an inhibitor pulse. Once I send this pulse, all of the remaining ants will lose their empathic link with the queen and frenzy destroying each other in the process. So that's all there is to it. What do you say? You will? How marvelous! Be careful, my friend. The Nest Guardians can be quite tenacious. Please, don't insult my intelligence. Now...
I've detected some changes within the Queen's hatchery with my equipment. What's transpired? Oh, how marvelous. Please, tell me what happened. What? How could you do such a thing? What kind of nonsense is that? What does science have to do with a religious belief? Now I ask you again, why did you do such a horrible thing? You utter buffoon! You've set my work back months, perhaps even years! I'm afraid I have no further use of your services, and any bargain we may have had is null and void. And now, if you'll excuse me...
It was so weird. All of a sudden, the ants went nuts and started fighting each other. It was like they were totally crazy. It was really scary, but kind of cool at the same time. You know what I mean? I wish I had something to give you for all the work you did, but I never really had much to start with. I guess now you'll be on your way and I'll have to try living here by myself. Hope you'll come back and visit someday. Really? You mean it? Oh boy, thank you so much. I'll wait in my old house for you to come back. I need to bury my papa anyway. Just don't forget about me. Well, papa always told me about my cousin Vera. She lives in some big giant ship somewhere or something. Papa called the place Rivet City, but I don't know where it is. You're pretty swell for... Welcome to the Weatherly Hotel. Welcome to the Weatherly Hotel. I'm your hostess, Vera Weatherly. Well, I really shouldn't tell you, but have you heard about Polly Cantelli? He's addicted to Ken's. His poor wife, Cindy, is at her wit's end. Poor dear. I know what it's like to be alone. I'd love to take him in. Don't worry. I have the means to keep him fed and healthy, but most importantly, safe. Oh, that's wonderful. If you ever wander back into Rivet City, why don't you check up on us? You're always welcome. I do the repairs around here, so if you see something that needs fixing, let me know. Welcome to Rivet. If you don't know you, don't care.
decided to check out the shop at Pleasure. I hope you found me a place to live. You really found her? Oh, thank you so much. I can't believe everything you've done for me. Most people would have kept on walking when I ran up to them screaming like I did. I'll get my stuff together and move on out there right away. Come visit me sometime. Madam? 